Hi, everyone. Thank you very much for joining. And um, I do know, especially in these special times, and I do know that you have a lot of choices. So thank you very much for tuning in. And um, we'll take about 15 to 20 minutes. I will race you through what we believe right now hybrid events are about. And I'm looking forward to fun questions. What we're going to talk about, I'll give you a very brief introduction about us, then we'll go into live, virtual, and then take it to the fun part, hybrid, bringing live and virtual together on eye level. So we at Fock Dams have been in the industry for almost 50 years now with um, offices everywhere in the world. I've um, been in this company for almost 20 years, 22 years actually now, taking it over from my father some time ago. So what we usually deal with are live events. So we do anniversaries, um, take care of other um, um, projects in these sizes. We take care of um, projects like um, in-house events, all kinds of corporate event business in all kinds of different eras. But now, as all of you have um, noticed, times are different from what they used to be. Because um, when COVID-19 hit, we started going from almost totally live in 2019 to almost totally virtual right now. And the outlook is going to be a mixture. So while everything is loosening up right now, we will be heading um, into a hybrid futures from today on. So we have been um, looking into trends for quite some years and started with the hybrid event in 2011 and um, have been evolving hybrid events ever since. Now let's look a bit in the current time. So the virtual events that we're dealing with are all kinds of different form and shapes, but there are a few outcomes that we have um, gathered from a study that we've taken in the last two months doing purely 100% hybrid events. The first one is it is about participation and interaction um, and co-creation. Webinars just don't did all the way. The second moment is there needs to be haptic moments. So people love to touch and feel um, and together with what they see on screen, if they have something they can touch and feel, this is extremely helpful. And everyone would like the um, freedom of choice. So the corporate festivals that are happening in the live world or that used to happen in the live world are hitting also the virtual world. And everything needs to be short and faster paced. So putting a three day event into a virtual three day event is not happening. And it is about being social and exclusive. So providing extra value um, is helpful. And also it is helpful to keep people from attending the event and doing a certain cap to keep it exclusive. Now there are three moments of mature level from events that we um, do. The first one is what we call streaming live moments into the digital world. So this is what you, what we're actually doing now on um, Zoom. These are webinars, landing pages that just lead to um, a stream, including a chat function. The second moment is translating live moments into a digital world. So coming from live, but translating it into digital is two. Three, and this is the most striking and most interesting idea, is creating digital first event experiences. So really starting from digital first 
and then creating an event out of this. I would like to take you through a few examples that we've been working on in the last few weeks. The first one for one client, we're actually transforming over 600 um, formats into virtual conferences the end of this year. Some of them are basic webinars, some of them are interactive, but there is a chance to really move um, a lot of content into a virtual case. The next one I'd like to share is um, two, sharing translating live moments into the digital world. And ideas here is, um, for example, creating um, pre-planned events like town hall meetings or others into um, a virtual atmosphere. So we've been doing this um, um, and started for, um, in this case, um, um, a beauty company. And in our offices worldwide, we decided after this taking off that we create uh, virtual conference centers all around the world so that we have um, in almost every time zone a conference center that we can use to transmit virtual um, content in a TV studio-like atmosphere, but also with real people attending, and sometimes over a couple thousand people attending and being part of these events. Now let's come to the third, the created digital um, first experience moments. And um, there we're going into all kinds of different um, elements where we are really losing the life momentum in the beginning to start thinking on a blank page and then creating um, a fully immersive digital experience that can also um, include augmented reality and virtual reality. Other elements um, are um, what we just did for um, a tobacco company that we recreate um, a trade show in a virtual um, arena. Um, recreating a trade show that is then really leading through different parts, interactions and keeping all the different formats in one, um, in one area. We also created, and this is one momentum that is extremely important gamification right now. You probably all know these um, um, collective stickers that you end up um, sticking into an album with all um, your favorite football players or such. We took this idea to use it internally to motivate internal teams using their own pictures in their home office as um, sticker opportunities. And I just mentioned the haptic moments that are extremely important that we are also using um, momentums to sent out packages with real um, product for an experience that you can do yourself in front of your screen at home. And this is extremely um, driving. Um, it's more like an, um, in Europe, um, sometimes you have over Christmas these calendars where you open for every day a single door and you can exactly do the same during your live event virtually online that everyone is then asked to open the package and um, take something out of it. But now the interesting question is what comes after COVID-19? And like I mentioned, we will be hitting into a hybrid um, um, into a hybrid time. And this hybrid time is um, driving life and virtual together on an eye level. And this is new. Hybrid events have been happening for 10 years, but not truly on eye level. 
And this eye level um, is extremely helping also to define how many moments of life and how many moments of virtual you would like to add, depending on, for example, the COVID-19 issues that you're allowed to do this much live or this much virtual. So now let's look um, a bit into the success factors of these hybrid events and how to design them. The first success factor is the guest management. And this is extremely important because if you have in the middle line, you have the clear central, um, 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 the clear central normally known guest management process, you have to add other processes now for hybrid events. You have to do number one, um, create a, define people which areas you are allowed to um, invite people. You have to take health self-assessments that have to be GDPR compliant and you have to get people to confirm to these um, parts. I'm actually racing through this. Feel free to send me an email afterwards and I'll um, provide you with this deck. Um, for example, on site, there may be temperatures, te um, rapid testing um, like Emirates is doing or that you want to check if the Tracer app is set up. And these moments, it's extremely um, important that you have a clear setup on the live moment of a hybrid event where you walk people into a venue and out of a venue again. So we will have to have separation moments, um, testing, screening areas, self-check-in areas, and separate in and out lines. And now we'll come to the general um, moments of um, hybrid um, events. There is in the center, you see the plenary situation with breakouts and on one-to-one uh, -one moments. And you will have all the virtual studios, the virtual conference content, the pre-produced content that will come into your hybrid event. And this then has the chance to go through a hybrid um, direction um, production into what we call an open platform. And this is, um, we have been, um, rapidly developing this the last month on the basis we've been working on because every client and every task needs their own specific element and it is much better to have an open platform that no matter um, if your clients use Zoom, Skype or other elements to integrate. And this then helps you to also use a second. So how do we keep them on eye level? Um, the one thing is important that you keep stuff virtual that needs to be virtual. And this can be, for example, on-demand um, um, video ask um, moments so that you ask questions via video and get a video shared as an answer. But also a content library where you can keep um, content um, to be viewed before and after the event. The next moment um, that is important is um, networking. Due to the um, um, rules and regulations, we probably um, have, um, will not be allowed for a few um, days to eat food while we are at the same table with other people. To overcome this, chat roulette is an enormously nice idea to do breaks. So you're standing at a standing table, having your food at the live event. At the same time, you can pick and choose from the virtual crowd taking part whom you would like to talk to. And um, the same everyone on the virtual home office screen can pick and choose whom they would like to talk to on the real screen. The next moment I'd like to add is the second screen option. So the second screen option that you're really focusing on a second screen, like we are doing now with the IMAX app, to ask questions, to do polls, to give applause and whatever. And the same screen is being used virtually and live. The next momentum, and there are lots of software services um, 
Laon this, that you are able to do co-creation breakout conference uh, moments to work on the same stuff while people are in the same room and people on a virtual basis. So now taking all these experiences together, there are a few outcomes um, what we've gathered over the last years and especially from the virtual experience in the last months. So agencies are needed. It's not just about a tool. It is really about your goals, your strategy, the concept and the content. Social distancing will drive life. So the longer you are in the home office stuck, the higher the desire to become social. <laughs> Virtual will be killing some of the live events. Number three, crisis management, especially for guest management, will be a must have on number four. Five, social interactions will be revalued and brands have to change themselves into going there. And by the end of the day, six, live events will become more valuable than ever before. That was it from my time. Thank you very much for listening. And now I'm looking forward to your questions. I'll start with perhaps an unusual one. I mean, some of these, you don't, you don't know what they are, so it's going to be quite a, a, a pivot for you to suddenly answer them. But I, I, this is an interesting one. How are technicians facilitating setups? Um, what precautions will they be taking to ensure safety of their teams and indeed, therefore, the people they meet? That's via, that's via Daryl Nielsen at Palace Resorts. I think the issue here is, I suppose, there's a lot of, when you, when you put together an event, hybrid, or, or live, or you know, a mixture, or completely hybrid, or completely live. Some elements of it you can you can disconnect. But as a speaker, I can say the one people we always have interaction with are the AV guys, the the, the technical guys. How do you think service providers are going to manage the interaction, whether they're AV or not, mm -hmm. between their staff and the staff of the organizer, or indeed the attendees who show up? This is a very good question. The, um, by the end of the day, it also depends on the rules and regulations in the specific market. But by the end of the day, it all comes down to um, the basic hygiene factors. Keep your distance and keep your mouth and nose covered and um, wash your hands. <laughs> very straight, straightforward. Very straightforward advice. Um, there's a question about pricing strategy, uh, Kolya. Uh, what could be a pricing strategy for hybrid versus virtual events? I'll give a, a, a personal example. My wife's a VP of global events for a company. Uh, she's now on her third virtual event. The first two were not behind a paywall, so they were just live on Facebook. Um, but now she's now grappling with the software to put the content behind a, a paywall. Um, I know she was looking up in terms of what should I charge. Any ideas or any advice on where organizers can go to start getting a gauge of, of the, pri the, the general or the accepted pricing structure for an attendee, perhaps, at a virtual event? This is also a very tricky question. Um, um, I believe it's best to um, take the basic line of what you have spent for your event in the past and then um, decide if you're going purely um, virtual then um, there are certain elements that you can save but you should keep in consideration and this is extremely important that you still need a strategy still need to set your goals and still need to prepare your content and this is where most of the money goes so you start with start with what you normally do um, look at your costs and, and I guess like starting a, a, a small business, you work out what your costs are and, and uh, any profit margin if applicable and then make sure you're covering that and making any any profit through the uh, revenue that you can generate. Um, gentlemen uh, here. Mark asking which tools or software do you use for the virtual exhibition? I guess that's a how long is a piece of string? Are you, do you feel comfortable commercially promoting a certain product that you use or 
would you like to give us a, a two or three? Um, there are plenty of companies um, offering these services. But honestly, I believe that there will be less of them being used right now. There are a few reasons. First of them, they have been um, ex an extreme um, rush on these platforms. Some of the providers cannot fulfill all the business they've taken on in the last um, um, eight weeks. The other one, um, issue is um, creating a virtual creating a virtual trade show coming from the real trade show is difficult because the experience then lacks the fun part. So also creating a virtual trade show, I would recommend to start with the experience and then really see where would it fit in because you already have a website with probably lots of um, information. So what would be the added benefit of creating your own virtual or purely virtual trade show? Okay, that makes sense. And I think, um, yeah, it, it, there's certainly gonna be no problem in finding a range of solutions because they're, they're, they're certainly out there to look at at least at the moment. They're certainly um, doing their marketing at the moment. Um, there's some concern about the cost of this. Uh, lady, Amanda in Edinburgh, um, probably Amanda Ferguson. Hello, Amanda, if it's you. Uh, this is all very well, the cost of this. Obviously, there's a high cost. If you're a big blue chip company, that could be a lot easier to afford. Um, is there off the shelf technology that smaller event organizers can use? I don't know if there's, is there crowd funded? Is there, is there sort of crowd? funded or, or open source software? I don't know of any, and it's, again, it's a, throwing you a question um, without knowing it, but do you, do you think these are prohibitively expensive in general, these solutions? I don't think so. Um, there are lots of solutions available already. And um, if you, what we created is kind of a best of. And so we are, um, cre we are using a platform where we add um, existing solutions and taking the best of everything together. But there are lots of solutions, one you are using here right now as Zoom, that can be used to host a purely virtual event. And um, um, adding other solutions is also not that difficult. But please keep in mind, this is not about technology. It is really about the general idea to come up with a concept, a strategy, and then um, make the decision which tool you're using at the exact very end. Also, if you compare this to a live um, event that you've been doing in the past, you also did not start with the um, AV specs before you knew what you were going to do. Very good. It's a very organic approach to this new reality. Um, okay, I'm gonna I, I, I'm gonna break my own rule because I haven't got any more here, so I'm not I'm not missing out anybody. Um, there's a couple of interesting questions. One's maybe more an observation to share with everybody, which I think is important from Nuno. Um, Nuno says, I suppose the issue with 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 going along this line, going to the virtual um, or the, the hybrid event or the virtual event, is that traditional venues will lose business. So it's not necessarily a direct question, but a rhetorical one. What's going to happen to the big conference centers? Will a big auditorium be substituted by a small green room? Well, again, yeah, the, the, the live event my wife did, four and a half thousand people attended. It was in their office, in the corner of their office. Um, so I don't know if you've got a comment on that. I guess it's inevitable, isn't it, Collier, that the, 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 the venues where, you know, hiring a venue, the type of venue people hire is going to change. I believe the big venues will be the winners because due to um, rules and regulations that you have to keep your distance, this can, with large groups, can only be um, done in large venues. And smaller venues do have the opportunity to um, become like a virtual conference center for um, a hybrid event. So I do see there's still potential. 
And also, um, we are moving from a total virtual world right now into a hybrid world. So people want to get out there and get together again. So this is not going to stay the way it is currently. That's, that's good to know. Okay, with the hour, with the time on the hour, um, half past the hour here, we're going to wrap that up there, everybody.